We, Sonia, and Januni are a couple of pals studying science in undergrad. We are not professionals. Though every episode is meticulously researched, mistakes do happen. If you notice that anything, and we mean anything, we state is inaccurate, please let us know. Your comments, suggestions, and queries are important in furthering our personal and audience's understanding of science. Thanks for being a part of this discussion. We appreciate you. We really do. Bop, bop. Beep, bop, bop. Restarting? <coughs> Sorry, COVID, am I right? <laughs> Beautiful, gloomy day. Yeah, here in Hamilton, Ontario. <laughs> I was gonna be like, the city of, don't know what the city is. The <laughs> city where steel used to be made and it's very polluted per like parts per million, mm. like the particulate matter that's in the air. Like it's no bueno. We are breathing in carcinogens, everybody. <laughs> Anyways. Hi, I'm Januni. I'm Sonia. And we're Beaker Bros. Sonia. Why don't you talk about what Beaker Bros is all about? Excellent idea, <laughs> Jenny. Um, so yeah, uh, we are two undergraduate science students. Science majors. Science majors at McMaster University. Specifically, we're studying life sciences, and we're both really interested in the idea of just pursuing research and communicating science in general. Just to sort of gain an experience personally, but also like for you guys as well. We're going to be talking about uh, science research that's currently going on in the news and just things that we find interesting about science and we're going to generate conversations about it and hopefully for the two people that end up watching this maybe you'll have some input and comment below. Yeah, that's all we can really ask for. Yeah. But um, today's science research or like topic we're going to talk about yeah. is going to be like effectiveness of like masks and stuff. I just really You're <laughs> just really that. bad. No, but you got your point across. Okay. You said like like 80 times. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Like it's good, you know. Like, just yeah. like. Okay. okay. Anyways, so with COVID-19, mm -hmm. um, definitely like there's like, the whole everyone wear masks and stuff. Yeah. Um, but really, I feel like, yeah, a lot of people are complying with it, but not many people might not know like the science behind it mm -hmm. and just like how effective it is and just like maybe how many people are wearing it or not, because there are yeah. people who don't. But yeah, yeah. just want to start with that. Um, mm -hmm. Fun fact, mm -hmm. uh, there was like an article, like McGill article they wrote, so about, I believe- Shout out to McGill. <laughs> Shout out. 83% um, of Canadians wear yeah. masks, and 67% of Americans wear it. So, it's kind of like, what do you think causes that discrepancy? Did the article- there's actually like some like reasons that like people who are against it like mm -hmm. maybe like there are some correlations between people who don't wear masks and maybe like different beliefs or like different like age groups or genders mm -hmm. but again correlation does not always equate causation mm -hmm. so i want to share that cool. okay so basically um for canada people the more people who were initially not like who were against wearing masks at the beginning were people mm -hmm. who supported like bloc quebecois Party. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But now, more recently, it's actually supporters of the conservative party are being the ones that are more, more against, like, okay. or the people who choose not to wear mm -hmm. masks. Um, in America, so like the United States, mm -hmm. um, it showed that people it was more people who leaned uh, towards Democrat tend to. Oh wait, yeah, sorry. People who were more um, favoring like Democrats or like they're they yeah they're Democrats or whatever. Um, they tend to wear masks more than those who do not okay or who are not democrats so i guess it just goes back to that idea that you're saying like correlation doesn't mean mm -hmm. causation so it's not necessarily meaning that if you abide to specific standards that are set by a certain political group it doesn't mean you're um, automatically going to be favoring you know wearing masks yeah. or not it's just i guess an example of how like certain demographics tend to lean towards like certain like views or perspectives i guess yeah. you could say yeah but i guess like the most important part of like like their surveys were definitely not like like completely perfect we can mm -hmm. say so you can't again like make a conclusion based on that but it's just like some ideas if they were to do it properly by like 
the like the whole experiment procedure, the scientific method properly, like mm-hmm. we could definitely we could make a conclusion based on that. Yeah. But yeah, that's just an interesting fun fact I found out. But there's also another study. Oh, just so many. <laughs> so many. But it's, it was just cool. This one was like um so researchers were actually observing shoppers in Wisconsin, so like land of the cheese. <laughs> I don't know. Land why. of the cheese, home the of the cheese. brave. Yeah. Um so basically they were just noticing like on average that shoppers who looked like women i'm saying like women because of course you cannot like, like specifically because they're wearing yeah. masks and stuff and those who look like older adults again i look 12 but i am not <laughs> <laughs> so again it's just like um they were actually the ones that were more likely to see like wearing a mask versus like others who do not fit that category mm-hmm. so that's also that um and other studies obviously notice a trend with like older people women more educated individuals and like non-whites you're yeah. more likely to wear a mask. Interesting. I like how you brought up, like, you really specified the fact that there's a lot of differences between specific demographics, not yeah. just before when you were talking about political parties, but, like, with, um, like, gender and age groups, age groups and all that kind of like stuff. race as well. Yeah, it begs the question, like, why certain groups of people side to wearing masks versus not. It could also be like so many different reasons why, right? Like ones, like again, like the more educated individual one, like mm-hmm. education, right? Like different, you could be looking at different communities, right? Yeah. And how the education they release, um, they receive, mm-hmm. or like with the more like older people, maybe like there's like generational differences, right? Yeah. Like maybe they're more used to following, conforming to mm-hmm. the like societal norms or like whatever than maybe a different generation. Okay. So stuff like that. I think there's a lot of like. There's reasons behind it, but it's, like, Mm -hmm. a lot of reasons why. Yeah. I guess that, uh, going back to what I was saying before, even though, like, communities Mm -hmm. in general from, like, the education system that we receive, like, the curriculum's a certain standard, the way that standard is delivered then within specific groups or, Mm -hmm. the like, people choosing to absorb that information, it differs between people. Yeah. No, I feel like even, like, let's say you have a bunch of students, like, in a classroom at a public school, right? Yeah. They might all go to the same school, receive the same education, but their home lives could be completely different. And that sort of, okay. That could also affect it, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, also, like, accessibility to, like, news, right? Or, like, as, like, we're trying to talk about, like, accessibility to, like, science communication, right? Yeah. Like, effective science communication, too. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I think that could, like, that could really have an effect of, like, why people don't wear masks and, like, whatnot. Yeah. But as for, like, educating you guys, like, a lot of people might be, there's, like, at the beginning of, like, the pandemic, Mm -hmm. CDC and, like, World Health Organization, Mm -hmm. they were against cloth masks, right? They were, like, don't, like, don't, they didn't, not against, they just didn't recommend them, right? Mm -hmm. But now they're actually recommending cloth masks, but that's also because, like, more for the reason of, like, surgical masks need to be allocated to like healthcare workers and like Mm -hmm. frontline workers like all that stuff so there was like a a shortage sorry of like those masks during the beginning of the pandemic but like there's cloth masks are still efficient so like n95 masks Mm -hmm. are the most efficient yeah right we know that um surgical masks next are the most efficient and then cloth masks Mm -hmm. there's actually like studies have shown that like um sorry lab studies basically of like they record the droplets mm-hmm. of between let me let me look at this or 200 to 500 micrometers so that's basically generated just by saying a simple phrase mm-hmm. that's the amount of droplets so they they did uh, they did that and they recorded through like a high speed video and try to see like how much of the droplets passed by so mm-hmm. they used a damp washcloth and they saw that basically all of these droplets were blocked from the mouth when it was covered by air washcloth so it shows that like cloth masks are still like effective when it comes to stuff like droplets pertaining to that range yeah that's interesting there's a um an asap science video that um pretty much shows that and lays it out in like a seven to ten minute video that's really effective at explaining that idea not even like using i mean they so let me backtrack for a sec so in that video they basically did an at-home study looking at the effectiveness of masks yeah so like you were just talking about that but they also compared it to lab studies oftentimes with in labs those are mimicking like ideal conditions Mm -hmm. so sometimes 
they're not entirely representative of what um, like actually happens in the real world when we're communicating and talking and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. But they did a comparison video showing like research like you were talking yeah. about in a lab and then using masks at home and it had the same like more or less the same level of effectiveness. Like even if you know you happen to not be wearing your mask entirely properly mm -hmm. or if there's like whatever some sort of issue with it, having a mask has been shown on countless occasions, not just anecdotally, but from scientific evidence like you were talking yeah. about, that it's more effective than not having a mask. And especially, like, I guess people's like, concern is, like, how can you know, like, even with a mask, like, if someone else has COVID, mm -hmm. right, and, like, you don't, like, how effective is that, like, stopping from, like, getting COVID, right, yeah. like, even wearing a mask? There's actually been cases. So there's one case where a man, oh, a man flew from, like, China to Toronto, mm -hmm. right, so he was... He tested for he tested positive for COVID, and he wore a mask on the flight. Mm -hmm. And like basically all the like twenty five people that were like near him, yeah, none of them like they all tested negative for COVID. There's another example that's awesome. Right? There's another example that I saw. Um, I'm pretty sure it was a New York Times article. Mm -hmm. I'll double check it, and if it's an error, we'll just take this part out. <laughs> but um, in New York, there was a hairdresser who didn't realize they had COVID. I is that the same one that you also I have a hairstylist in, like, Missouri. Okay. Then maybe it might have been in Missouri, but I found it in a New York Times article. Okay. And, um... No, you go ahead. You go no, ahead. No, I, I don't want... Okay, if I'm saying it wrong, then you can... I will go ahead. Yeah, but I remember reading, like, they had COVID. Yeah. But, um... And they found out after, like, doing hairdressing, whatever, on, like, 50 or 60 people or something yeah. like that. Like, a decent number of people. And nobody got COVID because everyone was wearing masks and following... Yeah. The restrictions yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Kind of shows you like how amazing masks are. Like just cover your mouth and your yeah. and, like your nose and you're pretty good. You're solid. Yeah. One thing I really wanted to do, not to like steal your thunder, okay. is sort of <laughs> um, in addition to like laying out the statistics that we've sort of done as like yeah. a pre preliminary yeah. like introduction to it, let's take it back in time a little bit. Talk about the history of masks Ooh. and how they started. Because masks obviously I'm just not been known to it's be not, used. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like it's just a COVID thing. No, yeah. I mean like the in pop in um uh, like from a popularity standpoint in like pop culture and stuff like that, or not even pop culture, just like within society in general. Because of COVID, now it's starting to become known about PPEs, and all, I started when I said that. But, like <laughs> PPEs, <laughs> <laughs> but like. Yeah, now, like, society in general is starting to learn about the idea of PPEs, but, like, like if you weren't in a healthcare profession mm -hmm. or in science, working in a lab or something like that, odds are you would have not known about PPEs. Mm -hmm. But now it's starting to be known. That's amazing. Yeah, but going back in time, though, like, PPEs aren't something that are new. They've been around for a little while. Let's talk about the history of masks. History of masks. Oh, um, wait, say that again. I'll put music. Boop, 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 boop. Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the idea of uh, surgical masks in particular, um, they started, they've, well, going back for a little bit. Uh, pandemics aren't new. Pandemics have occurred in history for literally hundreds of years. I think there's been eight major pandemics that have occurred, like, with, throughout, like, human history. I was going to say only eight? But well, like, major. within the past, you know, like, uh, thousand years, like, okay, like, you can name them off. There's been, like, eight main ones that, um, have sort of gone on that global scale. And we got lucky to have one in yeah. our lifetime. Yeah, oh, fingers crossed. Oh. Good lord. Uh, but, um, yeah, there's been, and throughout history of health and pandemics and all of that kind of stuff, people have been using various forms of masks. But the idea of uh, surgical masks that we know today sort of came around in around uh, the early 1900s, where it was basically like layers of cotton gauze that were layered oh. on top of each other and then cover your face like that. Oh. And those masks in particular were not only used by uh, healthcare professionals back in the early 1900s, but um, during that time, 1918, that was when the Spanish flu popped up and a lot of people were getting sick. That was also um, a, a global disease like COVID. So people also started using uh, surgical masks as PPEs to protect each other from getting sick. Um, but yeah, the beautiful, 
the, 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 the beautiful idea behind those masks and the masks that we use today is that it's for altruistic reasons, if that makes sense. Mm, no, I get Am I using that word right? Like, it's not yeah. for, um, it's not like intrinsically that you wear um, surgical masks and cotton, cotton masks for, it's for protecting other people from you. Right? Oh, so it's not yeah. like, so let's say like you have two people wearing masks. Let's say this per my hand over here has COVID, like, or this person this has, has COVID. COVID. <laughs> this, this person has COVID. This person doesn't. Like, wearing a typical uh, cotton mask isn't going to necessarily protect you from getting COVID, but it's more so like if this person has COVID, they're not like spewing their germs onto you. Does that make sense? Interesting, because I'm gonna like relate it back to like. I mean, that brings up another scu- yeah. discussion, though. Like, in a way, it kind of does, if you look at... Yeah. That, that brings up... That's <laughs> foreshadowing. But, like, the main idea, like, the original idea behind masks, though, it wasn't for, like, uh, reciprocating purposes. It was more for, like, altruistic reasons. That's but, amazing. But we're gonna, we're gonna touch upon that, though. Evolution. Okay. Yes. Yeah. They've evolved. Ooh. But, um... Yeah, sorry, did I steal your thought? No, I was just, like, quite, I was just questioning it, because, like, from, like, current research, mm-hmm. and, like, what you've been presenting, like, from, like, mm-hmm. you know, historical, like, just what it was used initially, yeah. it's, like, it's quite amazing to see how it has evolved over time. Yeah. Right? Like, just, like, not only are you, like, now you can protect yourself with masks, too, mm-hmm. right? To an extent of, like, certain yeah. droplets and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, like, before, how it was mainly to, like, protect others. Yeah, that's it's kind of, kind of beautiful. Like it was so, just people looking out for each other. Yeah. That's what like masks were. Yeah. Um, but within the past, uh, I would say, what year is it? 2020? 2021? I my mind. 2021. Yes, <laughs> it's 2021. Um, within like the past 30 to 40 years, though, there's been a huge evolution in um, mask products that have been very helpful in preventing both healthcare workers and the public from getting sick. Particularly with the N95 masks. I know you spoke about it a little bit before. Do you want to like highlight a little more? Or I was just saying how like um oh also like at the beginning of the pandemic, yeah. people were talking about like N95 was like the most effective. Yes, it is the most effective, but we also have to like keep in mind that like the supplies should be again allocated to like essential workers, healthcare workers, yeah. at risk like individuals. Mm-hmm. Definitely for that. Um, but yeah, that was just all I had to share about N95. Okay, that's that's still very valid though. Yeah, like allocating those resources for individuals that specifically need those high quality, mm-hmm. high grade stuff is very important. Yeah. But with the N95 masks in particular, that's something I really wanted to discuss like right now. I'm curious on like how they work. Yeah, that's a very good question, (laughs) Janine. But, like, truly it is, though, because they've been thrown... Like I was saying before, the idea of masks and PPEs have been really been popping up in the media recently, and people have been hearing N95. Like, what does that mean? What does that do? Why can't I... Have one. Yeah, Yeah. where are they? (laughs) Where are they? (laughs) But, um, yeah, it's something I really wanted to talk about. So, with... N95 masks in particular, they were invented by this dude, his name is uh, Peter Chai. He, a very smart individual, he's an entrepreneur, he is, um, um, has a very specific knowledge and skill set in fluid physics, which is its own, like, Mm subcategory of, like, physical sciences, which is very interesting, but also very annoying to read about, (laughs) unless you like that kind of stuff, and that's all the power to you. But, um, anyways, yeah, they were, uh, invented by him, and they, those N95 masks in particular take advantage of, um, a very interesting, uh, subset of physics knowledge that we'll dive into. So, physics. Cool. Um, originally, (laughs) I hate physics, I'm sorry. No, I mean, like, you're better at chemistry than I am, so you have chem to an extent. And I have physics. Yeah. That's amazing. We we balance. We balance each other out. Yeah. I will never probably take another chem course again. <laughs> um, I might probably... have to. Oh, true. God. Um, anyways, so with uh, the N95 masks, here's how, here's how they work. I always thought with those masks, or just masks in particular, like they kind of worked as like a window shield. 
mm. or like a sieve or yeah. like a, those strainers okay where yeah. like if you pour let's say rocks and sand and all that kind of stuff through it the tiniest of particles will fall through yeah. but the larger than medium sized ones won't go through yeah. that strainer yeah or like like whatever if the window shield like the net thing yeah the net yeah that's better to explain it but yeah that's how i thought they already always work yeah turns out it's not how they work spoiler alert wild <laughs> so um basically here's how they work at a microscopic level like tiny um the tiniest of particles mm -hmm. um so like the virus the like the air droplets like all that kind of stuff they um how do I explain it? Like, at microscopic levels, everything's really sticky. Meaning that, like, even, like, particles themselves, they, um, like, everything, like, sort of sticks to each other. There's, like, that interaction between yeah, the there's, particles. Yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. So, and because of that, like, because the weakly attractive force between the molecules is so, like, strong, like, everything mm. kind of, like, sticks together and holds together in, like, small places. So, like, like there's, you say they're weak? Yeah, but to get like the accumulation of these weak like interactions makes it strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, okay. there's that chem knowledge <laughs> coming through. So uh, basically, how they work is that with with the N95 masks, the fibers that um, hold them together, they're woven in like a spider web. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, because they're woven in that spider web web pattern rather than a grate, it sort of creates more. Uh, layers between like um the outside and like the part that like <laughs> the part. inside and um so f with that in mind and the idea of like how the particles interact with each yeah. other and sort of stick there's a couple of key factors that uh, uh peter chai took advantage of uh with particles because of the way that they travel larger ones typically travel in a linear path Okay. The largest of particles, yeah. so ones that are around like a thousandth of a micrometer. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. Still really small, but yeah. Like... Or sorry, a thousandth, a thousandth of a millimeter rather. Oh. So that's okay. So it's a different measurement from a yeah. micrometer. Anyway, so uh, particles that are around like a thousandth of a millimeter or some, like around that size, they travel in a linear uh, path. And because they're traveling in a linear path towards that spider web woven fabric uh that you know makes up the mask statistically speaking it's almost inevitable that they will interact with it with that mask yeah with these smallest of particles because they're apt like they're insanely small yeah like even smaller than like the thousandth of a millimeter which yeah. is already super small they travel in this random zigzag uh motion called brownian motion so they kind of just go all over the place and again, because of, you know, they're going all over the place ra rather than whatever, it's almost, again, statistically proven that they will interact with that um, woven fiber mask. Yeah. The issue is with the medium-sized particles. Oh. And that's because um, with uh, particles that are sort of, like, in bet that in-between medium size, yeah. like, they basically, um, so they basically have the ability to be carried along with um, the way that air flows around the fibers. So because, oh, so it's not like yeah. traveling in a random motion. Yeah. It's not traveling linearly. It's traveling with the air, trying to get through the mask. Oh. And because of yeah. that, it's easier for those medium-sized particles to get through. But the reason why the large, small, and the medium uh, particles don't get through for the most part yeah. is because it takes advantage of like the charge that we spoke about before, like the um, like of the N95 or yeah, or jump the gun there. So like the way that the particles interact, yeah. it takes advantage of that. And what they do with those masks is they electrically charge them. Oh, okay. So, like, they manufacture it to have, like, an electrical charge? Yeah. So that way, those particles, all of them stick to it. So it's not like those masks are, like, or what's it called? So it's not like those, any of the particles have the ability to go through for the most part. The particles because, are, like, attracted to the mask? Yeah, they're attracted to the mask because of that charge that they manufacture the masks with. But, yeah, it's like if you take, like, a piece of, like, a magnet or, like, a piece of iron and you put it, like, in a strong enough magnetic field, it can remain permanently magnetized. Mm. That's what they do with those masks. They, like, permanently, or not permanently, 
permanently, but yeah. they like put it in like this electric field that like electrifies the masks, yeah. and like the particles aren't going. They're not going anywhere. They're not going through. Oh. And because of that whole process, they are ten times more effective than regular surgical masks. Oh. Yeah. That was a very convoluted description. Of no, I think that was really good. It was like that's like very interesting. Okay. Thanks for helping me out with the explanation. <laughs> I realized I was jumping the gun on some parts of it. And my like, oh, <laughs> yeah. no, I was like, I, that was actually very interesting because yeah. you would assume like small and big. Okay, like if one can go through and the other can't, then yeah. like medium would probably like yeah. be able not to go through. Mm -hmm. But it's very interesting to like know that like it can. Yeah, like it's like that's the one thing that I learned that was very interesting mm. if it worked like a window sheet or what's it called like a net yeah or if it w worked like a grate or something like yeah. that then how are they protect like keeping those little particles out of there yeah like, how are they how are they uh, doing that but no there's charge no there's charge particles travel in weird paths and that's they're sticking to it i love that yeah i love that for particles <laughs> i love it for them i love it for <laughs> that's us that's amazing but the kind of funny thing is maybe not funny maybe ironic rather okay. is that uh because of the whole COVID-19 like the Peter Chai um after like doing all of this you went to retirement he was like peace out I'm done with this obviously I too would yeah you make your wealth you save a lot of lives you obviously would sometimes want to dip that's what he did but because of the whole COVID situation and the lack of N95 masks that are currently in circulation for healthcare professionals, mm -hmm. um, what they've been doing is trying to figure out like how to clean them so those masks can be reused. Oh, because like, correct me if I'm wrong, but they lose charge over time? Or yeah, uh, the charge I think lasts around, if I'm, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know, so I can't correct you. Okay. <laughs> Um, from what I remember, I believe they last around five years. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Like, if they're in their package and, like, not opened. Yeah. What, what if you're using it? That I don't know. That depends less. on, like, it's, um, yeah, it's most like less. Yeah. Okay. But I know, like, if they're just sitting in, like, their packaging, yeah. for the most part, what I've seen is, like, five years. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. It's pretty good. But, obviously, when you use them, that yeah. doesn't last that long. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Anyways, you were saying before. Oh yeah, like he's basically come out of retirement to figure out how to clean masks and reuse them. Like, get back here! You're not done yet. <laughs> You're not done yet, we need you. Oh, since we're- I just burped and now I'm gonna take a sip and we're <laughs> taking a sip. Why don't we talk about today's beverage of the day, Janine? Well, mine is a cold brew. Mm -hmm. So it's actually, I think, the blonde roast. Okay. I'm just being very specific here. Fun fact, so sorry I cut you off. No. Blonde roasts, they're more caffeinated than the dark roasts and the medium roasts. So you're you're gonna be jittery. It's because they don't roast it as long, right? So the, like there's more mm. caffeine in it. The longer you roast it, the less caffeine. Why did I think this made it was sweeter? I mean that's fair. I'm new to this whole making my own coffee kind of thing. I mean to be fair. You know, I'm not gonna roast you, it's okay. I'm not really making my own coffee. No, you're not. But, but hey, I, it's, it's like, it's a step above from instant coffee. It is, and you know what, it's better than actually buying the thing. Cause then you save a lot of, you save a lot of money over time. Me thinking about how I bought coffee yesterday. Um, yes, <laughs> don't buy coffee, <laughs> make your own coffee. Anyway, Sonia, what do you have? Oh. I'm glad you asked, Junini. <laughs> um, so this is a iced espresso and iced espresso um i make my own vanilla syrup so you take some vanilla extract sometimes i like using the pods but the po like the vanilla pods are expensive so we don't do that here um anyways take some vanilla extract melt a shit ton of sugar and water to make a syrup and then i flavor my espresso with that and i add a little bit of almond or not almond almond milk doesn't taste good also another fun fact almond milk is pretty bad for the environment because in North America, a lot of uh, the almonds come from California, yeah. and uh, they are grown in areas that are like really prone to forest fires. Oh. So, but uh, growing almonds also takes a sh like a crazy <laughs> a crap ton of water. Like, so instead of using the water to like fight the fires, they've been going towards like growing almonds to like 
feed like this growing population that wants almonds, which is not a good use of resources. So if you can, one of the most uh, environmentally friendly options is oat milk and it tastes better than pretty much most options in my opinion. I've never had like any um, mm -hmm. types of milk except for the good old cow milk. Well, we have it in the fridge, you can try some. Just might have to, but I mean comparison, so I cannot Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Can't say almond is better than oat. You know, everyone has their own opinions. Yeah. Sonia's might just be correct because she actually makes her own coffee. Yeah. Mine's store-bought. Me and my pretentious self. Anyways, back to the episode. Mm. <laughs> yes. I think it would be very interesting to talk about how, like, I feel like you guys might know some people of, like, people who don't choose to wear masks. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I wear one. Yeah. Just because I think. Well, one, I think, for work, obviously. Yeah. And then, two, because it's the right thing to do, mm -hmm. you know? Um, Wait, do you want to reiterate what you do uh, this work? Oh, yes. I work in a long-term care with cute little old people. So little old folks. Little residents. <laughs> They're great. They're great. So that's what I do. I, yeah. That, that's, that's what I do. Uh, yeah. Yep. That's your thing. That's my thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so obviously I have to wear an N95 mask at work. But when I'm not at work. I like to wear my good old cotton mask. Yeah. Because surgical masks, we should keep them for healthcare workers when they're actually working. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm just going to keep saying that. <laughs> um, well, adding on to that, yeah. what's your uh, choice of mask on the everyday? What kind of, what's your... Should I give the color? Or yeah, talk about your mask. mask. Well, it depends on the fit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I have a black one and a mm -hmm. white one. But I also have these colorful ones mm -hmm. that let's say, like I'm, they're kind of bluish, mm -hmm. right? They're, and by the way, they're all like cloth masks, or like cotton masks, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, depends on the fit. So I like to color coordinate. Mm -hmm. If you see me not wearing one that goes with my outfit, don't say anything. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a rough wrong. day. <laughs> it's been a rough day. That's all I can say. But yeah, that's my go-to. And also, it's like really good for my skin, I feel like sometimes. Just like when I wear the surgical ones, they're rough and yeah, kinda, yeah. they cause me like acne quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But the cloth ones are kind of like they're very nice, soothing. Yes. How about you? <laughs> I was just gonna say before I talk about my mask options, yeah. that ties into an interesting point, like yeah. how they sort of become a part of fashion, like Ooh. the industry yeah. sort of um, because of the whole situation, the yeah. COVID yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, they've made a market out of it, and now it's become ingrained in a lot of, like, fashion I feel like, especially choices. in, like, Western countries, but, like, I feel like Asian countries, like, that's been a thing. That's been a thing. That's in Japan, thing. shoot, my dad, one, um, before, um, like, years ago, my dad once had to go to, uh, Japan for business, and he was saying, like, that's always been a thing. Like, yeah. people are always wearing masks. Yeah. Very polite kind of culture they got yeah. over there. It's so actually another fun fact that mm. actually like relates to this. It was showing that, let me look at this correctly, um, or read this correctly. Basically, it was do 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 do. Okay, there we go. So <laughs> it was a study looking at like COVID deaths among like 198 countries, yeah. and they basically found that those with cultural no norms or like government policies favoring mask wearing, so like countries like Japan or whatever, they actually had lower debt rates than like countries who don't have mm -hmm. these cultural norms. So Japan, Japan, do I? Hmm? No, I just had a brain for it there. I thought like Japan's rates of COVID were high. Were they not, or were they in check? I think in comparison to like just oh in comparison to like yeah okay. but not like yeah. I'm not saying they have low debt like but the, the rates are not low it's just low work comparatively yeah. so if you look at like not just Japan specifically but like New Zealand and Australia yeah. and those yeah New hip, Zealand obviously is like those hip folk yeah yeah obviously we don't live there but the way that they're spoken about we the want media. to live there yeah New Zealand if you are accepting citizens. I would like to apply. <laughs> but anyways, going back to my choice of masks. Yeah. Just to beat that nail on the head a little more. Um, I wear this blue plaid one that's kind of cute. Mm. Um, I also have these like black ones that I wear that they come in those like re they're not reusable. Disposable? The disposable ones. Yeah. <laughs> reusable. They're not the opposite of it. Yeah. And um, my 
mine isn't as exciting as yours. Oh. Mine don't color coordinate. They don't match. I put them on and I leave the house. Okay. So if you see Sonya wearing one that doesn't match your outfit, don't say anything either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How often do you like wash your mask? Um, like oh, like frequently. Like uh, I would say, well, the cotton ones. Um, to be honest, I don't really go out that much either way because of the whole <laughs> pandemic. The cotton ones, though, if I rewear it, I probably do it like every couple days. Oh yeah, I have like a bunch of them that they're just like yeah. in circulation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you open my uh, what that thing glove compartment, yeah, there's just masks everywhere. Yeah, and then if I haven't washed them, then I normally just wear those like black disposable um, ones and yeah, yeah. But if you don't wear a mask. Why don't you wear a mask? Like, take a guess. If from like, from as a guess, but also like sort of based on um, Reason. re- reasoning, yeah, yeah, like research that we've done for this episode, mm. a lot of it comes down to the population's trust in the people that are articulating these public health policies and rules. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, if you don't have an appreciation or trust or admiration, whatever adjective you can think of, for the person that's like regurgitating these health policies mm-hmm. like you're not gonna follow them like you don't have the incentive to if that makes sense no no yeah that makes sense um there was an actually the, the, there's an article right it's mm-hmm. so also like the girl is writing the article also sorry to cut you off no, no, no. really quick um we keep saying there's an article all these articles are going to be in the description so if you want to like further read upon what we're saying or like add to it just or you don't believe us, well, well, we're basing it off of information, yeah. it's down below. Yes, but, so yeah. there was like the same McGill article that, as I mentioned below, so they basically collected like a bunch of studies and kind of like input from various sources yeah. of like the reasons why people don't wear masks. So like, as you said, the how people don't kind of believe in the people who were like preaching, I guess yeah. you could say, to wear a mask. So one of them was government conspiracy, so of course, of course like, these uh, anti-maskers think uh, they noted that government officials like they're confusing messages like definitely mandating these like requirements mm-hmm. let's say how like the messages were kind of confusing in the earlier days again like research wasn't really done in the beginning so it was obviously confusing because like scientists didn't know what was happening government officials didn't know what was happening we didn't know what was happening mm-hmm. um so that's one of the reasons why so the whole government conspiracy that this is all there is also the other one how they believe that COVID nineteen is actually no worse than the flu. So it's 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 just the flu, guys. It's just the flu. <laughs> it's just a bad cold. They really like it's. They're basically saying how they have like doubts in like the scientific knowledge and how um, the people who do like speak about the science behind it are just cherry picking the information of like unverified sources and all that stuff and like it's all found on social media that's the information where they get and that's why they think it's not valid mm-hmm. um i'm just saying these are their reasons i'm yeah. not saying anything more um some people <laughs> some people are just they're not anti-mask but they're anti-government or anti-mandate okay so they're like well, doesn't that like make you oh actually no it's yeah good, like die. okay so yeah. continue so they're basically like how it goes against their freedom that's mm-hmm. why they're, they like they'll wear a mask if it wasn't the government basically telling you yeah. to do it right um i'm like some of them just don't like wearing masks apparently it's not cool like it's just not hip it's not hip to live you know apparently <laughs> we should I don't know. i'm just saying like if you had the kind of masks that i had the different colors it is hip it is in it if you had the type of masks i do it that, is, that, that also is, works it, it work. works yeah if you were all black or all white yeah or like just like neutral colors and you know what black at the end of the day my black masks they go with everything oh yes you can't yeah. go wrong with black so get a black mask yeah i think that's i think that's a no yeah, yeah. it's like it's you know how girls have basics like yeah. you have to have this in every wardrobe oh, you gotta a black have mask <laughs> <laughs> a black mask got a nice pair of jeans nice mask <laughs> you're good you're good yeah. to go um, anyways, back. Yeah, so people obviously are like, they just don't like masks. And like, another one is like medical conditions, mm-hmm. which I also like, kind of want to bring this up because. Oh, like, that's funny. Sorry. No, I know where you're going with it. Go. People will claim that they have medical conditions, but some people will say like how it's impossible to wear them. But the Canadian Thoracic Society released a statement um, that basically debunked that whole co- claim that wearing a base mask would cause a flare up of like underlying lung condition. Um, but they just basically recommend, like, it just, it's not true. Like, that's not gonna happen. 
right? Basically recommended that individuals who can't like tolerate wearing a mask, like, and they can't like go physically distance, just don't go outside. <laughs> just stay home. <laughs> just stay home. If, if you really have a lung condition, just stay home. That's funny because like COVID nineteen is a respiratory condition. Like, so if you get sick and you have a lung condition, you have a lung condition, like you're just <laughs> in a whole world of pain. I just realized, I don't think we actually like explained how COVID-19 is transmitted, did we? I don't think so. But I would hope like most people know by now, but if they don't. Yeah. Just to, the couch is mine. Thank you. Sonia, yeah. Please um, <laughs> just to like reiterate really quickly. Um, COVID-19 is a virus, not a bacteria. From a um, genetic standpoint, there's differences between the two. Um, we can put a link in the description below. Right here, that goes over it <laughs> very, very well in depth. Better than we could in, in a shorter amount of time. Yes. Um, the Immuno Queen probably can highlight that. No, no, okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> we don't want to talk about Immuno. <laughs> Um, anyway, so it is a virus, not a bacteria, that is transmitted through uh, drop water droplets, aerosols, stuff like that. It's not airborne. If it was airborne, that'd be t- in- in- terrifying. Bad. Hide your kids. Hide your kids. Hide your wives. Hide your dogs. Hide your dogs. I think I don't know if I'm mistaken, but I feel like I saw an article in the news like a couple days ago that it was found in a gorilla. Oh, I was doing a dog. I was like, I gotta hide my dogs. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I want to see. Hide your gorilla! Hide your gorilla! <laughs> Yo, King Kong, if you're out there- Wait, is King Kong a gorilla? He is. Um, I think so. Right? How I do I don't know. gorilla? Gor- go- G? I was gonna say it's Gor- G-O-R-I-L-L-K. Gorillas at San Diego Zoo test positive for coronavirus. Is it maybe because- 19 like, hours ago. Is it because like our DNA might be similar? Yeah. Maybe- Oh, that's amazing! Maybe? I don't know. Did you know- uh, gr- uh, bananas were genetically like fifty percent genetically similar to a banana. It explains like a lot of DNA. It explains yeah. a lot of things. Yeah, Hard, right? In sort. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we are. <laughs> we are part banana. But anyway, sorry. Going back to it. Um, yeah, it's tra- transmitted through air droplets. So if and you mean, like to gorillas, gorillas hide your gorillas. So if you sneeze, cough, cough, any sort of sputum, and even like a simple fluid. phrase too, like if you spit out, mm-hmm. for like me who just Like you were out. talking about at the beginning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Beginning would have been a better time to explain this just in case it wasn't known already. But, um, yeah. Yeah, so we're like, talking about- yeah, in a simple phrase, like you spew out about like 20 to like 500, uh, I want to say millimeters or it's not nanometers. That's for sure. Millimeters is distance. Micrometers, micrometers. Oh, micrometers. oh, I thought you were trying to say like no, like the amount that you no, spew no, no, out. No, 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 like, no. Okay, yeah, like it's like fifty. <laughs> God, <laughs> imagine fifty millimeters. <laughs> the spit just comes out every time. <laughs> <Stop. laughs> God, wait, is that the unit of measurement? Now I'm confused. No, it's, it's micrometers. Liters. Milliliters, not millimeters. I was saying millimeters, I meant milliliters. You know, no, no, no. Like, yeah. we got the Yeah, point. yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we're good, we're good. <laughs> so in a simple phrase, um, like, you can find, like, 20 to 500 micrometers in a simple phrase, like, of droplets. Okay, yeah. yeah that's, that's so even then, like, COVID, just by speaking to someone, you can have... <laughs> you can have um, it trans- transmitted to another individual if you are infected. Interesting. I think we've... Not to deter from what you're saying. But how I think, rude. How dare I? But I think we've beat this topic on the hail and mm-hmm. on the head quite a bit. On the head? <laughs> on the, on the, I said that saying wrong, whatever, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean. I hope you do. Um, let's like change, up, change it up just ever so slightly so we can wrap up this talk, topic. Um, if we want to address people who do not wear masks, mm-hmm. if we want to like begin conversations with them to sort of um, iterate the importance of them. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not going to take one conversation to convince someone to start wearing a mask if they firmly believe they shouldn't be. Yeah. Um, But if we want to start that conversation, what are your thoughts on how it could be approached? I'm trying to remember from my psych courses and, like, how to, like, address people. Yes. Um, I think 
nothing really comes to mind but like the first thing is like if you are a person trying to talk to an audience that is not with your like um argument mm-hmm. you, first you can't attack them yeah right and it doesn't matter if it's someone with credibility saying it right mm-hmm. so you have to find like a common ground yeah is what like is what i remember no that's so true um from what i uh what I've, from what i've read as well like what you said about like the individual who's mm-hmm. articulating that information is yeah. so important a lot of the times just people don't respond to statistics and all that kind of stuff because yeah. it's not something great they resonate with it's like jargon and like yeah. no one like if you don't understand you're not going to really pay attention yeah not even that though it's just so hard to quantify like let's say um you say something like a million people have covid blah 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 like that's a huge number but it's like as an individual it's so hard to imagine a million like that's a Mm, lot we hear numbers thrown around so many times whether it be in the context of war or um just like any sort of crisis going on it's hard to like wrap your head around it so one of the most effective ways to articulate that sort of information and start to you know allow people to see your narrative Mm -hmm. whatever it may be is to appeal to something called the common motive so a lot of times for the most part some people might have very like weird opinions on things Mm -hmm. or like differing opinions i mean some things could be weird but we'll we'll say differing to be more (laughs) diplomatic i guess um but yeah but because of those differing differing opinions it's not always based on like malicious intent like we were talking about before like why some people don't believe in wearing masks it could be from like um you know the person that's articulating that information to them like they may not have trust in their leader they Mm -hmm. may not have trust in the science all that kind of stuff because of like personal reasons yeah so the easiest way to like begin those sort of conversations is to appeal to someone's consciousness and talk about something that you both agree with for example if we want to look at uh the context of covid19 Uh, We can start that conversation by saying we all want to protect kids. Mm -hmm. Like, unless you're a really bad person, odds are you want to keep the kids safe. So if you can begin the conversation by talking on something where you both, like, with common ground and, like, common intent, that's where you can start, like, expanding the conversation. And it's not just, like, some saying this, it's not something, like, like I made up in my head. There's been a lot of research backing up Mm -hmm. this idea. It's been used to spark conversations about climate change. It's been used to spark conversations about um, the anti-vax movement. It's interesting that you bring that up because I actually saw this video of a woman uh, confronting a group of pro-life, yeah, pro-life protesters, yeah. right? And they weren't wearing masks and stuff. Mm-hmm. So the woman was actually, she actually went up to them and instead of like attacking their views, she was more confronting them about them not wearing a mask. And she, her argument was that you want to save lives, right? Mm-hmm. And you want um, lives to be saved. Yeah. I literally said the same thing. You want to save lives <laughs> and you want to be saved. I'm like, you continue. <laughs> basically, like, even pregnant women, you want to keep them safe, right? Mm-hmm. So the whole idea was like, why don't you wear a mask? Because you could be, you will be saving other lives. You could be um, protecting pregnant women. Mm-hmm. And the way she addressed it was very calm. And they were actually, like, listening. And they weren't getting, like, riled up. They were like like understanding about it and it kind of showed that like she was like i want to save lives you want to save lives why Mm -hmm. don't we work together to do it that's so awesome like she wasn't um like coming at it of like obviously like in that situation you can easily start conversations and like bashing each other not just about like masks but like other beliefs as well but the fact that she just like went about it very diplomatically and like had one approach and that's it yeah was very very effective That's it, was, cool. it, it was like very and she was not that like i'm not gonna say she was an old like she was like a young individual like us i would say yeah. right and just like the maturity she held by doing that it's like it's a, it was amazing if i find that video i'm just gonna link it down below here oh, if not then we'll just well say, then i won't <laughs> we'll take that part out too um but yeah i think that's a very positive way to end this episode yeah thanks for sharing that story Januni. thanks for letting me share that story sonia and thank you for watching <laughs> <laughs> that was good <laughs> um yeah that just wraps up today's episode again thank you for watching if you have anything that you would like to share pertaining to this topic or other topics that you think would be interesting to explore or you know drinks that we should explore yeah or make 
in addition to coffee, uh, let us know. Let yeah. us know your thoughts. Mm -hmm. We're eager to make follow. and learn. Yeah. And converse. Yeah. About. Cool. That was an hour. Wow. Thank you for staying this long. Okay, bye. Bye.